Hey all, Michael Balistrieri from Black Snow Comics here. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little about the new Tick series that's on Amazon. Uh, I haven't heard much about it. It doesn't seem like it's gotten much attention. Uh, so I just thought I'd give my two cents, maybe spread the word about it a little bit. Um, my background with The Tick is that I started watching it when I was a kid when they had the cartoon on Fox Kids in the late 90s, mid late 90s. And probably that's how a lot of people first found out about it. Uh, from there I started getting into the comics a bit. It's one of the few comics that I actually wanted, like sought out and collected. Uh, I still pick up on occasion. Um, it, it, I liked it a lot. It, if you're not familiar with the tick at all, it's kind of a deconstruction and a satire of superhero comics. Um, it's not meant to be taken super seriously. It's got all kinds of kind of wacky elements to it and surrealist things going on with it. Um, after the cartoon, well, the cartoon versus the comic, just to kind of talk about that a little, they're they're similar in a lot of ways. Um, some of the characters are different, um, but the the biggest difference is the tone. The cartoon taps into kind of as you might expect is a Saturday morning kids cartoon I think on Fox Kids and you have to kind of dumb some stuff down or make some stuff a little more um, appropriate for kids um, and the comics had a little bit more of an edge to them and they were more uh, cerebral um, the, the cartoon was just more humorous it, it still had stuff that adults might still enjoy and I do have uh, some of it on DVD and I've gone back and watched it as an adult. It's still funny. Um, they did make a live action tick show in the early 2000s that lasted a very short time. It got cancelled um, part way into its first season. So I also have that on DVD and I watched that at the time because like I said I was a tick fan so I was excited about it. And I do like that TV show. Kind of like the cartoon it took a very specific take on the tick and it went with what if the tick was a sitcom basically and um, like there's not much action to it which a, a superhero thing usually has action um, the ticks kind of mixed in there with because it's not action is not the main focus it's um, generally it's comedy is the main focus so there was a lot of comedy in that and I thought that was pretty good um, but now we've got this new Tick show on Amazon Prime, and the history of the show is a little interesting. Uh, Amazon Prime, if you don't know, Amazon Prime makes their own shows now, and they have for a few years, and one of the things they do is they put out pilots, and the pilots that get the most views and highest ratings, they will take and um, make into shows. So. I think is about two years ago at this point the tick showed up with these other pilots which is kind of um and a little bit of an auspicious start where mo most of these things are not pre-existing properties these are things that amazon's come up with themselves so there's not like a built-in history or anything so it was a little odd to see the tick kind of lumped in with that and being put on this kind of meritocracy voting system with all these unknowns um, but I guess the tick is not the hottest property and never really has been so um, it's not gonna get the same kind of treatment as something like um, like Daredevil or or these uh, Netflix shows so anyway the tick was on there and it did get picked up and then um, it took a while I would say about a year and then finally they released five other episodes and now about a week or two ago they released six more episodes so I believe that's the end of the first season so 12 episode arc and um, it definitely felt like it was the end of a season based on the, the way the story played out so the when I first saw the pilot I was really not knowing what to expect. I really didn't like the way the Tick costume looked. I did not like 
the actor playing the tick, he just didn't look right either. Um, the tone of it was very, very strange. Um, it, it's a much grittier take on the tick and, and brings back a lot of edge, which there is in the comics. Um, not like a ton of edge, but it's not like the tick comics are, are Sin City or anything. But there is more of an edge than a Saturday morning cartoon or a sitcom would generally have. Um, so I didn't really know what to make of it. I kind of liked it. I kind of didn't. Then they released the next five eventually. And once I saw it play out in more of a story, I got more into it and I could see what they were going for better. And now that I've seen the whole um, season and, and the way the whole story's played out, I would say that I enjoyed it um, and I'd recommend people give it a try. If you're a Tick fan or if you've never heard of the Tick, I think you can enjoy it either way. Um, I think that what it does take from the comics is, that was missing in those other adaptations is the, the surrealist tones were I guess always there in kind of the way that it's been kind of portrayed as wacky but this takes it to kind of a, a darker different level with the surrealism that that does exist in the comics and the comics are a space where pretty much anything could really happen um, but like they did establish early on that there are some consequences like there was a character killed and there there has been drama in, in that sort of way um, that that that's something that's been missing from the other the other iterations um, so so having that in here and then another thing that's more prominent in the comics that has not really been featured at all in the other the other versions is that there's a lot of um, kind of psycho analysis with the tick um, in the comics uh, part of what's interesting about the tick is you don't really know anything about the tick as like his background there's not really an origin story and eventually you do get some of that with that he came from an insane asylum or, or something along those lines um, but the tick doesn't even know who he is himself and that plays a pretty interesting role in the show um, the tick's search for kind of meaning and identity is, is done in a way that the other versions of the tick were just done as more he's kind of a simpleton this tick well, he's not smart, but he does um, have have deeper elements to him, um, and that's something that I really have always liked about the Tick. If you've read any of my comics, um, in particular, if you've read I'm Famous, the main character, the Lone Wolf, I took a lot of inspiration from the Tick with that, where the Lone Wolf was seemed to always be somehow experiencing things in life for the first time or not grasping general concepts and looking at things in odd ways and then other times he'd revert to being this egomaniac and he had like different elements to him that some of it um, kind of borrowed from the tick uh, but back on the show the show does something that I think is very wise um, it puts the main focus on Arthur. Um, it's told through his lens. Uh, it's more of his story, and the Tick is just a big part of it. And um, Arthur, if you don't know, is the Tick's sidekick, um, an unwilling sidekick at first, and a guy that doesn't really want to be in this whole superhero uh, world. He doesn't. He doesn't want that drama. It's not really part of what part of his goals or anything like that but he gets kind of pulled into it um and the way they've expanded on him on the show is pretty interesting i don't remember he, he's never really had much of a backstory in a lot of ways and they give him a lot of backstory in this and i don't want to spoil things but um there's a tragic events in his past that have set up who he is now and what his mental state is and and that comes up quite a bit too um what is real and what isn't what's what's imagined in his head um things like that 
So I, I really appreciated stuff when it was done on those kind of levels um, and examining his relationship with the tick and what it really is. Um, Another difference with this version is that it's one continuous story. Um, it's very serialized. The other, uh, the cartoon and the um, live action sitcom, pretty much were just episode to episode. There's very little that impacted the next episode. So that's, that's really different. And in one way, that seems like that could kind of mess with the formula because you won't have as much time to introduce new ideas and characters and things as you would on kind of just each episode having its own story but really they do a good job of actually continually continuously introducing new elements and um and characters so by the end of the season you are exposed to a lot of interesting characters and ideas um so i would say that you don't really need to worry about that being a criticism um and having the longer story arc, I think, allowed for a lot more character growth and um, kind of, it made things more interesting. So I think that was a good idea. Um, trying to not just compare it to other versions of The Tick, especially if you've never seen The Tick, um, and trying to look at it just on its own, I still think it holds up very well. I don't think it's anything that you need prior knowledge of to enjoy. Um, in some ways it might help because you're not, you're not having any kind of expectations. You're not sitting there thinking, well, this is different or why didn't they do this or, or that kind of thing. Um, so I would say anyone can jump right in and enjoy it. Um, I think that if it had come out on uh, something like NBC now, or um, if it had been a Netflix pickup it's something that probably would have got a little bit of attention because it is different and it is interesting. Um, I don't think anything else is doing something exactly like it, but since it was Amazon, I think it just kind of got largely ignored. Um, so this is kind of my way of spreading the word and saying that it is worth your time. Um, the, the effects on it, are all right. Um, that's another thing that probably would have been a little better if it had gone with something else. Uh, there are some times where the CGI is noticeable, um, but there's other times where things are pretty good, and it's not a show that needs a ton of effects. Um, a lot of it seems like it's probably done practically, which I appreciate anyway. Um, as far as action, there is actually a fair amount of action throughout the show. And it's done, it's handled well. Um, so it's not just people sitting around talking like, like the sitcom usually was, um, or some other things are. Um, in the sitcom, it even kind of made jokes where the action was happening, like outside while they're talking or things. Um, or, so they, they were dealing with more limitations then as far as that kind of thing. But there's some pretty good action in it um there's some good twists and turns to to pull you through the whole season um there's good strong characters um some of them i think were made up just for this i didn't recognize but they're they're all kind of um based off archetypes of superheroes anyway if you have any familiarity with superheroes and comics a lot of it will feel familiar to you but then they'll kind of turn expectations. So I would say uh, check it out. And I guess I don't have too much else to say about it. So I guess that's it.